Hello, my name is Martin and this is 3D Printing Iceland. In this video, I'm going to do an initial thoughts slash review on the, on the Prusa i3 Mark III printer. I bought this machine as a kit from the Prusa website and I did a build series videos where I went through all the steps of building the printer and, and this will maybe be the conclusion of that video series where I do this final thoughts or, or review. So let's have a look after the intro. So this printer was bought uh, with my own money and uh, this review is in no way uh, paid for by Prusa or anyone else. It's just my uh, own thoughts and, and my experiences on the printer that I'm going to talk about. So first I'm going to show you a few things that uh, I find that was truly uh, beneficial from the MK2S printer. I, already on also and the first thing that i really love is the removable bed the option to just take the plate and, and flex flex it to get the prints off it's uh, this is uh, awesome design uh, it's not the first printer to have a removable build plate so it's not uh, nothing anything new but uh, it's a new for a Prusa machine and this feature I really, really love and it's so easy to remove large or small prints with this uh, flexible bed and that's one of the favorite features. Uh, the second favorite feature I would say or design option is the new Y carriage. It's a extrusion based design. And uh, there is no more uh, threaded rods to assemble and to get this printer squared up when you're building it it's very easy so it's uh, a very enjoyable build uh, and it's a very stable uh, frame and the, f the frame and the uh, and the x carriage is very well bolted together and there's no wobbling in the in the frame of the printer so that's a design change that uh, really made the difference and, and it's, it's, uh, I'm really happy with that upgrade. Then uh, the second th big thing is, is the, the Noctua fan for the hot end cooling and that is uh, virtually silent that fan. You still have the part cooling fan giving out some noise but uh, the main uh, noise from the MK two printers with a hot end fan and this fan is, is virtually silent so that is also a good upgrade. Also the stepper drivers on the new board, the NC board, they are designed in a way that they don't have any end stop needed. They sense the movement and when there is a resistance in the movement it's picked up by the drivers and and they can pick up where where the end of the movement is, is on the bed and on the printer so they sense, sense it without any end stops so that's a great feature to reduce the number of wires that you have to connect and switches to, to take care of so that's a very good feature also two features in the extruder assembly is the, the Bontech extruder it's a very solid design and will grip both sides of the filament and it will uh, make sure that the filament is going smoothly to the hot end and has a very good control of the of the filament and also on the hot end assembly or extruder assembly is the Pinda Probe version 2 that has a thermistor built in so it's not sensitive to heat it will pick up the heat on the hot end area and the Pinta probe and adjust the temperature sensing so the nozzle will be in a correct place from the print bed and is not dependent on the temperature as with the Prusa MK2 printer. I was having small difficulties adjusting when printing from ABS to PLA having to readjust the live C settings so that is a good feature. Also the extruder assembly itself, the, the built design of the assembly has changed a lot. 
the parts on the design of, of this backplate on the extruder assembly is it's much more stable than the zip tie design that was on the MK2 printer and this is a very good mount also for the for the cables it's a new design here and I really like this design change and there are several uh, small changes like that this all over the the printer that is uh, worth noting that uh, makes the build process easier and especially the threaded rods the the way that you tighten up the y belt now you just loosen up those screws and put the belt in place and then tighten up the screws and and get a good tension it's much easier to do that or in the mk2 you have to rotate the motor um, so this is much nicer design so there are uh, quite a number of features like that that I, I really like the mounting system of the LCD screen that is also bolted on right into the plate and plate uh, it's much more stable and you don't knock off the LCD if you grab the printer by the LCD it's you can you don't break this very easily so this is a good design change also the, the ease of mounting the power supply because of the extrusions there's just T nuts in the extrusions that you can slide to a correct place there are, some people had problem mounting the power supplies on the MK2s so by having the extrusions there's a lot of th things like that that are made more easy so uh, I really like the design changes that they have made on the printer going by the extrusions and all the benefits that that has on the whole design overall the the printer from 10 meters away looks very similar but all those minor changes or big changes in the y corrects makes the printer a lot more desirable device than the mk2 even though i love my mk2s printer and i have no complaints the the build process of this pr printer is much nicer and it, it was a great build one thing they changed in the the material used they changed from ABS to PETG on the printed parts and that was due to uh, layer adhesion the PETG has better layer adhesion than the ABS they were using and that one changed that they made the parts look the same but the color is very really similar to the ABS prints on the MK2S but those parts are patchy now so that's one change they did I, I will link uh, in the video description to the website on the Prusa site where you can look up all the new features and see pictures of everything and, and pricing and, and such I'm not gonna read out the whole Prusa web page about specifications but uh, in general the build uh, quality of this printer makes it very silent and the dynamic drivers uh, have a lot to say in that and they're not, not too a fan also the electronics changed from 12 volt to 24 volt and i think that makes it the extruder heat up faster and the heat bed heat up faster it's very quick from you start the print until it starts printing so that's a nice nice feature also i had one problem initially with this printer when i started and that was in regard of octoprint there was some layer skipping issues and, and faulty prints happening came down to uh, a firmware change the prusa did and now with the release of uh, release candidate 5 of the latest firmware those is issues were fixed and that's basically the only issue I, I had with this printer uh, printing from the SD card had no issues and they published a new version of the slicer software with optimal settings for this printer so it was very easy to slice for this printer and, and start printing and initially I, I started printing uh, files from the SD card just to make sure the printer was working okay and there was no issues with uh, the, the build as this was a kit and I'm gonna show you some of the prints now. First print I did from the SD card was a Prusa logo. It's a like a seven minute print just to make sure everything is working okay and it was really really good print. You can see the shine in the bottom layers and the print was pretty much perfect. I then printed out the Atalinda Dragon uh, that was on the SD card as well and that came out really well. There was uh, a small issue here that had uh, drooping issues because I didn't print with any supports but other than that the surface of this print is, is awesome I then printed the, the bone dinosaur skull I'm not sure of the name of it but this printed out excellent and the detail in this print is, is, 
this is awesome it's a really high detail print um, and then I printed out this model of a castle and the fine points on the on the towers came out excellent as you can see it's very very sharp towers and, and they came out very good and there's no, like no issues on top of, at the end so the cooling with a new cooling fan shroud uh, system is obviously doing a good job so uh, the details uh, like here with those uh, items in the in the tower walls they came out great and the print is is awesome and uh, i'm really happy with the print quality and the build quality of the printer change with the accuracy of those prints uh, i then printed out this model i found this also on the on the sd card and it came out excellent there was no issues with this uh, it has uh, issue underneath here uh, but uh, it has had supports underneath here but that's uh, because of the supports laying down there but other than that, the, the model printed out very, very nicely. So those were the initial prints I did. And during the, the Matter Hackers Pro Series PLA review, I printed out this Pansy. And this Pansy came out excellent. There was absolutely no issues with this Pansy. And the print quality is, is excellent. There's absolutely no complaints. Uh, same with the maker coin I did uh, the print quality is, is excellent and there's no nothing I can complain about in those prints and I will, then I have been printing out a lot of uh, those items for my son's confirmation uh, event that is later this year and uh, this has been printed out with several types of filaments uh, PLA filaments and uh, this is the hi-fi blue and the the back side of this is just absolutely fabulous there is uh, no layer lines visible and it's just awesome print quality with with all the examples this is the uh, gold happens filament from filamentum and and this is poly uh, uh, emerald city and uh, this is the emerald uh, uh, nightshade from poly Acalmy as well um, this is the Matter Hackers Pro Series PLA so this uh, those prints have uh, turned out great and I have a full box of those and I'm going to use those uh, in the event for my son so the printer has been printing uh, pretty much non-stop over the last two weeks and uh, has given me great results one of the complaints I've seen people talk about was the rubber feet and they were losing very easily and dropping off and I just had a glue put underneath the rubber and this is just a normal uh, flexible uh, glue that is uh, easy to apply and just put them in place and then you're ready to go it's not an issue anymore of the feet dropping out so this is a very easy fix other thing i absolutely love is the new spool holder uh, even though this printer is now in my printer cabinet where i have a separate spool holder i put this spool holder on my mk2s printer that resides now on top of the of the printer cabinet and then i can just put the spools here and this is much easier uh, to use design than the two separate uh, plastic pieces that was included with the MK2S printer. So this is a nice, uh, easy, uh, great, but it makes a lot of difference. Uh, this is a file that you can print yourself for your MK2S printer if you, if you are struggling with the included supports that they have. So to test out uh, some of the new features that the MK3 printer has, one of them is automatic uh, filament sensing and uh, when you have the filament sensor enabled and you have preheating the nozzle you can just put in the the filament and it will detect it and grab onto it and it will uh, load the filament so that is a very nice feature uh, to use a sensor to detect the filament if you haven't heated the nozzle uh, you will get a message saying uh, the nozzle is not heated up so you can heat the nozzle through the menu of the printer and uh, it might be a nice feature to get an option 
to just select what temperature you want to go to and, and select that. It's very easy to load filament and I have this red color inside them. I'm just purging, but normally when you uh, change filament, it's dependent on the colors you have that you have to load and uh, load a little bit more filament through. The amount of filament that is fed through during the loading process might be a little bit more in my opinion. I usually have to uh, do this twice but now I can just confirm the filament is, is loaded. So the automatic filament sensor uh, is a very nice feature when you load filaments. So I'm going to start and get testing on the other features of the printer. So the next feature I'm going to test is the skip detection or crust detection. And the purpose of this is if the printer skips steps, it won't uh, shift layers. It will just detect the skip step and, and rehome and, and start the print. And uh, there's one thing to note about this feature. It's, it's detecting when there's resistance in the movement. And if you push the extruder in the same direction it is moving, uh, the skip detection will not uh, detect that. So you have to restrict the movement. And the recommended way from Prusa to test this is to clamp down on the smooth rod with your fingers to restrict the movement. And right away the printer detected the resistance and uh, rehomes. So it will know what uh, position to start again with and it will continue printing. What hap happens if, if you push the printer, the, the current detection in the, uh, in the trimanic drivers won't detect that. So it has to be a restriction of moment. You can't uh, push it along the same axis that, you're, uh, that the moment is. So uh, I've seen people online uh, saying that the crust detection isn't doesn't work and obviously if I if I push on the same direction it's moving it's not a crash it's just a push so it's not the same thing. One thing I haven't tried out or seen other people try out is the, the crash detection on the y-axis so I'm gonna uh, block the y-axis uh, by my uh, fingers and see if it detects that kind of blockage. And the same happened it detected the blockage and uh, rehomes uh, and continues, continues printing. So that obviously works fine. I think it's more difficult to try it on the C-axis uh, to restrict the mov movement of those uh, because of the two, uh, two motors and the lead screw, lead screw. But uh, my guess is uh, it will work the same on the C axis, but uh, this works in both Y and X axis, obviously. So, so that is working. I haven't tried it before and it, it did work fine. So that's a good, good sign. The next thing I'm going to try is a filament runout sensor. People have been testing this just by clipping on the filament and uh, the filament detection sensor has to be on in the menu. By default it's turned off, so if you don't turn it on in the menu, the filament sensor will not detect a, a runout of the filament. But this uh, filament sensor is a, a laser sensor that uh, detects the movement of the filament. And it can have a issue if there is very bright lights uh, pointing down to the printer. And uh, here in my small studio I have very bright lights, so I'm not sure if this is going to work but I'm going to try it out so let's clip the filament and, and see what, well, what will happen. So the filament has gone in and let's see what, what it will do. Yeah, it detected the, the filament was no longer available and now on the LCD it told me to press an, press an up to unload the filament and the filament came out and that was not an issue. Now it's told me to pull out the filament and ask me if the filament unload was successful and 
I say yes, it was successful. And now I will reinsert the filament. And it detects that and sets loading filament. And now it will extrude a little bit of filament. So a small amount of filament comes out of the nozzle. And now it asked me if the change was correctly and I can press yes. Uh, this can also be used uh, if you want to change colors, but uh, in my case I just say yes because it loaded correctly and I'm going to remove the, the filament that came out just so it won't get into the print. And I'll press yes and now the printer continues printing without any uh, issues. There was uh, a small string of filament uh, stuck on the hot end, so you have to maybe look a little bit more than I did to remove those uh, before it starts. It might give you a trouble with the print if, if it gets stuck in a print, but this feature obviously works. So now the, the last feature uh, that everybody has been talking about is, is the power outage feature. People have uh, complained about uh, this feature in a video uh, saying it won't work by uh, turning off the printer, but that is not the way it, the feature is designed. Uh, if you turn off the printer, you don't send the power out signal to the ANSI board and it won't store the position of the, of the print. So uh, if you're going to test this feature, don't turn off the printer by the power switch and it's best to have a power extension brick that has a switch on to, to test this. And I'm going to take off the power on my power strip and we'll see what will happen. So what I noticed uh, as soon as I pulled the plug, the, the head moved up a little bit, uh, maybe two millimeters or so and it's, it, it stopped uh, just after after yeah two millimeters or so but now i will plug the printer back in and uh, now on the lcd i will see a message recovering print and the printer is is rehoming and it is heating up it lost a little bit of heat but i didn't wait too long but the bed was uh, dropping down a few, few, few degrees, so it is heating up and obviously if this is a power outage that lasts for a long time, it takes the full heating time to get to the correct temperature. Let's see what will happen when it gets to the temp. Now without me any doing anything, it uh, moves into position and continue printing. So the power outage feature uh, was really easy to test and, and works obviously in this case. Uh, there was no, uh, there's no setting in the menu that you have to select for power outage. It's just a feature in the, in the controller and uh, this uh, can be quite handy f for people that don't have backup power or U UPS. Uh, for the printers, uh, most many people have bought UPSs to handle this uh, situation, but uh, you don't really have to with this printer. Um, you can even, uh, if you want to stop a print overnight, uh, just turn the plug or the power out of the on the power power strip and uh, resume the print the next day. So that's also an option. So it's a feature that obviously works on my machine. So those uh, safety and, and recovery features uh, worked exactly like the suit on, in my case. I didn't have any issue with the skip layer detection or the power outage or, or filament run out sensor. So everything and all the tests worked for me as the suit. I think uh, some people that have been complaining online about those features like the filament sensor not working, they were pointed out to turn on the feature in the in the firmware on the on the setting on the printer. So it's just a setting that you have to turn on. So it's uh, people have to read the manual to to get that feature enabled. But the other features are are enabled by default, and uh, there's uh, a 
good reason for for those features it makes life easier for the user and it's a great smart features that they have included in this printer even though the printer is very silent uh, by the default settings you can go into the menu and set it to silence mode and that will uh, even reduce the power uh, the, the sound of the printer to a very low sound and uh, one thing to note though if you turn the silent mode on the crash detection uh, is not enabled so the silent mode is an option that you can use but just be aware of uh, it won't have the crash detection feature uh, enabled so be aware of that so overall uh, my thought on this printer the, the build process as i stated in the conclusion video of the build series it was a very fun build and very good manual. The manual is excellent and you can't really go wrong. Only thing uh, that I would point out to get your life easier is to get a 2.5 millimeter uh, hex tool like this. Uh, it's much more easier to use this tool uh, than the Allen key, the small Allen keys and it makes your life a lot easier. But it's not a requirement. This tool it's just much easier to use. So. Uh, that's one thing I, I could point out in the build side of things but doing the build uh, with the online manual is is very good and also the printed manual that came with the printer is in full size manual and it's very good quality and, and you can't really go wrong if you are following the instructions and the, the print quality of the parts I've printed so far has been excellent I, uh, I've tested out some prints uh, on my Prusa MK2S printer and compared to this and, and both prints were rather small prints but they look pretty much the same. It's the same uh, E3D hot end but uh, I think if in taller prints you would see a difference in the Y carrots and the X carrots and the C carrots being more tight together with the extrusions so I think if you are doing big prints it will be an improvement in, in quality so I, I haven't printed a very tall thing on this printer yet I'm gonna print out several landscape models and, and compare to other models I have done um, they are usually 20 centimeters high so I can compare those to the other ones I've done in the past. Other than that, uh, the print quality is just excellent on this printer. Um, it supports uh, a various range of materials and the extruder assembly with a Bontec extruder is, is a really nice upgrade and, and the flex plate is, is an excellent upgrade. And uh, I have already uh, made an order for uh, my Prusa MK2S printer to Prusa MK2.5 upgrade to get the flex plate and the new Noctua fan and, and the new extruder assembly and that upgrade is, is well worth it I think because the flex plate system for removing print is, is just awesome thing and uh, now removing prints from my MK2 printer I feel like uh, why on earth <laughs> did they not have a flex plate before but uh, that's just one of those things the products develop over time and, and now the Prusa has a flex plate option and, and I think that's a very good upgrade of the, of the printer. For the review part of this process, uh, would I recommend this printer? What's my thoughts on, on is it worth uh, the price or, or would I go back to a MK2S printer if I was ordering a new printer? Um, I think uh, overall the experience with this printer is well worth it. it it's uh, a little bit more expensive than a Prusa MK2S printer. They lowered the price on the MK2S printer. Um, that is still a, a great great printer but those upgrades uh, that they did, did on this printer is well worth it I would say. And if I would have to get another printer, I would definitely buy a K3 printer again and I have no reason to to go back to MK2S printers. Uh, but like I said uh, earlier, the, the upgrade for the MK2 to MK2.5 is on the way and I look forward to do a video on that upgrade process. And the maybe only negative thing I could say about this printer is, is the issue uh, I had initially with Octoprint, but that was resolved in a firmware upgrade and 
and that has been working out quite well. So there was a short period of time, maybe two weeks of time, I couldn't use Octoprint with a printer, but uh, I guess that's expected with a new product. Not everything or every device uh, will work straight out of the box. So uh, as that could be fixed by a firmware upgrade, that's totally forgivable. And I don't think that it will bring the rating of the printer down to have a to do a firmware upgrade on it and it's very easy with the included software to upgrade the firmware and so that's not any issue for a normal user to upgrade the firmware and I have also got a new version of Slicer with the correct profiles for the MK3 printer and uh, I've been printing out with those profiles and they work very well and it's a very good addition to my printer makerspace and now I have two Prusa printers in my in my small makerspace and I initially thought I would just take the MK2 and put it in, a, in the garrets or something but I've also been printing a lot of things on that printer and, and now I have two printers running uh, almost all the time and I think I've, in the two week time I printed uh, like f five times, five days worth of printing on, on this printer already. Uh, so I think it's been running uh, smoothly, smoothly and, and given me good results. So now the print has finished and just to demonstrate the flex plate, it's just a, just flex it a little bit and then the print comes off and it's easy, easy as that. And it, it can't be more more simpler uh, removal of, of prints. It's excellent stuff. And so I'm really happy with this uh, flex plate system. And having a quick look at the print, uh, even though I did all the testing of the failure detection, I don't have any issues visible on this print. Um, it's very a simple print, but all the all the tests concluded with a continue process of the print, so it was not an issue to cut the filament or take the power or, or the crust detection on Y or or X axis. So it's just a very good result. So this will conclude my video on the Prusa MK3 printer. I had very experience making the printer as it was a kit and all the tests I did came out great and the print quality is great and, and my experience with using the printer uh, is excellent so I don't have any complaints uh, that are unresolved. I, like I said before I had the Octoprint issue but that's done and now I can use Octoprint without any issues and uh, I look forward to test out the Raspberry uh, wireless uh, that is connected directly to the NC port. So I'm, I'm getting a Raspberry Pi Zero uh, from Joe Mike at 3dkc.net. He has been uh, pre-configuring uh, Raspberry Pi Zeros to go into the NC port and it's in the mail and I look forward to install that and I'll probably do a video on that installation process. But so far I've been using my Raspberry 3 uh, connected by USB to the NC port and that has been working great after the latest release of the firmware. I think for now this will conclude this video and I thank you for watching and I hope you like or dislike this video. Leave a comment if you find something interesting and, and subscribe if you are interested to see more videos from me. So for now I, I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.